Hi, this is your host of Nepalti and welcome to a brand new episode of State of Energy. We are here in Paris to attend LF Energy Summit. Today we have with us once again Robert Tushwell, Solution Architect of GXF at Alienda. First of all, it's great to have you back on the show. Well, I'm uh, glad to be back. Yeah, we have covered, you know, Grid Exchange Fabric or GXF earlier as well, but it's always a good idea to remind viewers what is this project all about. So just give us a quick overview of this project. Well, GXF, um, um, we started a long time ago. Uh, even in back in 2012, we had the first initiatives of creating an open source platform that we could use for uh, 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 several use cases. Uh, GXF is a communication platform, so we can communicate with devices in the fields. Um, and besides um, um, supporting the communication with the devices, we also have lifecycle management functionality uh, available. So we can manage and control uh, the device during the complete life cycle of, uh, of the device. Um, and we, we started as uh, the open smart grid platform uh, way back and uh, try to create a community uh, uh, ourselves because Linux Foundation didn't exist at that time. Uh, Linux, Linux Foundation Energy didn't exist at that time. Um, and we started with our first use case, which was the public lighting in the Netherlands. Um, and we created uh, uh, applications on top of our platform that manage and control uh, the, the public lighting devices uh, in the Allianz area. Um, and the project went live in 2017, um, and it became uh, well a, a real product pr uh, uh, in the production phase. And we deployed more than uh, 18 to 20,000 devices, uh, which are controlled still, and. Uh, are responsible for the, the public lighting in, uh, in that area. Can you talk about some of the core components of this project? We have a, a layered architecture, um, which consists of uh, uh, industrial protocols uh, that are supported by the different types of devices that we, uh, we support. Uh, these protocols are uh, DLMS COSAM, for example, for the uh, smart metering devices, but also uh, IEC uh, 61850, uh, and IC 104, so those are really uh, technical uh, uh, industrial uh, protocols, uh, and we can easily extend it to new devices that uh, use the same protocol as well. Um, then we have a, a core functionality layer, which uh, contains functionality for configuration management, uh, lifecycle management, even firmware management. Um, which is, is used for well all, all devices that need uh, lifecycle management and, uh, and we can configure from, from remote. And on top, we have uh, specific domains uh, within the platform. Uh, and you can imagine we have um, um, for uh, public lighting, a specific public lighting domain, for smart metering, a smart, smart metering domain. We have a distribution automation domain and we can extend it uh, with any domain which is appropriate to be used for a specific use case. So that's, that's just how the, the, the platform is working. Can you talk about, as you're saying that on the very early uh, days when the project, you know, when you're working on it, you decided to open source. Uh, for how long Eliander has been doing open source? Or this was the first venture into open source? And why open source? Um, this was, the, I think, it was the first initiative to really uh, go open source with uh, a complete platform. Um, and the main reason was that we uh, we wanted uh, the possibility to have more innovation and and faster uh, time to market um, by having a community that we all the parties that are part of the community could uh, collaborate on on the platform and uh, add functionality, uh, extend it to a certain level that all the parties can uh, leverage from that. So that was the, the, the main idea. And um, especially to, to speed up the process of, of uh, releasing new functionality and also integrating uh, innovative uh, technology updates and uh, uh, into the solutions that we have. And you mentioned, if I'm not wrong, it was around 2012 or something like that. The that, we, that we yeah. started, yeah. yeah. 
So, so that means you folks have been doing open source for almost 10 years now, 10 years now. Uh, talk a bit about the internal culture, Aliander, because when it comes to open source, you know, first of all, you are talking about a lot of developers who are coming from outside, but the people who have been with you forever, you know, for, I mean, companies like these have been around for, so talk about how much was taken, how much effort was needed to change the culture of the company. Well, we started real small uh, to work on the, on the project. But especially the last years, when we joined the LF Energy, uh, uh, we um, made the the open source uh, way of work also the inner source way of work. So by uh, creating an uh, open source program office, we uh, uh, try to to motivate, I think, all the developers within Aliander to to share data to learn from each other and to um, um, not develop every, everything by yourself, but reuse what is available already. And that that is really necessary uh, for the work that we're in. And we need to speed up development. We, uh, well, we have to do reuse and, and uh, uh, use the software that's already available within Aliander, but also in the outside world because TSOs and DSOs, they have all have the same problems. Uh, they all have the same functionalities. So why not share that, that knowledge and share that information? And in the end, share the software as well. Once you joined, you know, LF Energy and of course, RT is one of your biggest partners there, you know, and then there are other players also joining it. If I ask you, since you folks have been doing open source for a while, what advice you would have for other, you know, first of all, the energy sector is a bit different, right? There will be just one big player for the whole country or so the whole region. So it's not like there are a lot of players, you know. Yeah, so, exactly. so, but, you know, it's very diversified field. There are a lot of smaller players or different players. So can you talk about the value that open source brings to not only a company like Aliander, why other companies should also do open source in this space? I think the main reason is to, uh, 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 to share uh, knowledge and to share uh, uh, also problems that, that that every company has. Because we, in, in, in large picture, we all do the same, uh, uh, same thing. And we need to share it, especially uh, because the, the large tasks that we have in the energy transition, uh, it's very important that we uh, try to speed up development by not inventing the wheel every time again. So we need to, to uh, uh, speed up the process by sharing and uh, not only sharing knowledge, but also sharing products that we use. We are here at this summit. Can you talk about, you know, uh, what kind of community you saw here at the event? What kind of discussions you had with the folks? Well, we found out that a lot of, a lot of uh, companies that are here, uh, they do have the same problems. And they, they try to manage the same the same issues uh, uh, that they're facing at the moment. Um, and here it's very easy to to talk to each other. As you are back at the company, it's 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 a long distance and it's difficult to 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 get the, the right connections. And uh, having a, a community uh, as LF Energy, uh, it tremendously helps uh, getting to to find each other. And, uh, and 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 talk to each other to see if we have uh, a solution for for each other. And I think helping each other is the the best thing to speed up uh, uh, and to 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 solve the problems that we face. What are the things that are in your pipeline, or what kind of future looks like for this project? What are the things that you folks are working on? Um, there's several things that we're working on. Um, First of all, we have uh, three uh, projects uh, live now. One is the, the public lighting, what I just told you about. The other one is uh, the smart metering project, which uh, um, um, manages all smart meters in, in uh, deployed in the Aliander uh, area, which are um, uh, uh, three to five million uh, meters, which is a really large amount. Um, and besides that, we're currently working on uh, low voltage, voltage measurements which we are deploying at the moment, um, where we do uh, uh, power quality measurements uh, in the low low voltage areas. Um, 
So that, those are the three uh, we, uh, projects we already have in production. Uh, and beside that, we're working on a uh, future uh, extension of functionality. And we have uh, battery-powered uh, uh, gateway devices, uh, which we connect uh, sensors to. Uh, and we can use those, those generic devices for several use cases for the future. And that will also help us uh, to speed up the process of uh, uh, digitalization of uh, uh, our work. Um, and beside that, um, we're um, in the middle of uh, uh, technology updates that we're currently uh, executing because, what I told, the project is already uh, a long time uh, in production and we need to upgrade uh, not only uh, the technology that we're using, but also the structure of, uh, of the software. So that's one of our main targets for the, for the next period as well. Can you also talk about the scope of this project uh, beyond, you know, just the LENDER use case, the three use cases here, and also when we look at the whole larger ecosystem, who else can leverage this project? I think all TSOs and DSOs could leverage uh, from the project because the 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 the, the, you know, the main functions that we uh, need to offer are more or less the same. So. In other countries, uh, the DSO is also responsible for public lighting, and uh, the DSO is also responsible for the smart metering devices. Um, and um, I think in all countries, we have congestion problems because of uh, 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 renewables that are added to the network and uh, the growth of energy consumption, um, which is really uh, um, um, very important to solve. Because it 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 uh, uh, the, the the growth of the uh, economy uh, will come to a halt if we don't manage to uh, to get the right uh, solution to this, and um, adding the low low voltage measurements uh, uh, in the fields will give us the insight we need to 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 see uh, where the real congestion problems uh, are at the moment. So. I think there's a lot of possibilities also for other companies to uh, to use uh, uh, GXF um, as a generic platform for uh, the communication in the field. Why they should use you know, GXF, you know, why can't they continue to use what they're using at the moment? I think the best thing to say is that um, it's already proven technology and it's available just just as it uh, is now available on GitHub, so everyone can can get it, and can thinking can think about how can I use it, um, and because it's very flexible and and modular, um, you can really extend it to your own needs, and I think that's uh, 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 an important uh, thing. And at Alianda, uh, we made GXF a standard building block that we're using within the company. So if we need to uh, um, have new devices uh, deployed in the field and the data from those devices need to, to uh, be retrieved uh, and, and the devices need, need to be uh, managed and controlled uh, uh, from, from within our company, GXF is, is the way to do that. So it's a, a standard building block uh, that's available for everyone and they can uh, fix, um, um, integrate it in the in their uh, uh, architecture landscape, so it's uh, very easy to be used for not only for existing use cases but also for future use cases. We would like to see more companies uh, uh, joining us on the development and on the use of, of GXF because it's a, a, a proven product. Uh, which is very easily to, to, to use. And um, it would help to have other companies as well, uh, as well uh, contributing to the, uh, the development of, uh, of, of the product. It would really help. Robert, thank you so much for sitting down with me and talk about you know, GXF project, of course, its scope, and how it can help the larger ecosystem beyond Alienda. Thanks for sharing those insights. And as usual, I'd love to sit down and chat with you again. Thank you. Okay, thank you for having me.